Uh, Omar, uh, good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you and uh, welcome and thank you for spending some time with us today. It's my honor. So today's webinar is a, it's a series of webinars on it's, it's their title, Creative Zone Game Changers. At the top, we're in this beautiful location at The View at The Palm. Uh, I think you've been here before, right? Yes, absolutely. Love the views. Excellent. Yeah. So we look forward to this chat with you and this conversation. Thank you. Likewise. Just to, to, to get started, tell us a little bit and tell our viewers who is Omar al Busaidi. So very quickly, I'd like to tell people that uh, first I look at myself as a global citizen from the UAE. Uh, I'm also a Fulbright scholar, an author, entrepreneur. And um, I just enjoy uh, making people happy and, and, uh, and making things happen, connecting people just like you. And um, that's what I like to do. I remember we, we met, uh, what is it, like eight, nine years ago. I think we have a picture that we might post even this, on this video at the top, Bush Khalifa. Yeah. We had a breakfast and we were sort of discussing. At that time, you were launching your book, yeah. uh, Just Read It. How, yeah. how did that go? I remember there was a lot of buzz around it. Uh, well, the book did very well. Um, I, I, it's already actually translated into Farsi uh, and it's going to be translated now in Arabic and Hebrew as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I spoke in the London, Frankfurt, Paris um, book fairs and, and, I, and I spoke also in different countries, uh, invited to speak to, to dignitaries and, and also organizations. Um, it's also uh, available in an ebook and an audiobook. In the audiobook, did so well that um, Qatar Airways put it on their in-flight entertainment. So that was, I thought it was pretty good for the first book and I look forward for the second book to be launched soon. You're outside and you're traveling around the world. People know about the Palm, about Burj Al Arab, Burj Khalifa. Yeah, I mean, there are some top attractions because a lot of the celebrities who come would like take uh, pictures or do videos about it and, and or even film, you know, like even now that you see movies being filmed on these attractions. Uh, the one thing for the Palm especially is when people see the skydiving photos. I, I did the skydive over the Palm and it's amazing. The pictures and the footage that you get after it, it's, it's something to remember. So yeah, people do know but I think like this this particular place where we're standing at the view at the palm like this should be on the top three things for people to do like to see Dubai. What are the main takeaways from the book? What are the main sort of uh, uh, summaries from, yeah. from it? I think uh, one of the reasons why the the book first of all like resonated with a lot of people is because the main takeaways from the book is it's all about social and emotional intelligence. And a lot of people know this, like we learn it in life, in school, at work, at home. Uh, all I did is I omerized it. That's what I like to say. So it, uh, a lot of people are like, oh, you know what? I know this. This was always in the back of my head, but I wasn't sure about it or whatever. So it, it wasn't like I, I, I gave something new or Marvel and it, it was innovative. It was just the same thing. But I, I, I think the way that I communicated the message in the book is what uh, resonated with a lot of people. Why, why Just Read It? Where did the name come from? So the name of the book, Just Read it, it, it's funny, Lorenzo, because I honestly, look, when people tell me, what's the book about? I tell them, look, it could be a, a guide for an aspiring entrepreneur. It could be for an employee looking to move from their employer or to move to another position, or it could be about someone who just doesn't know, they're not doing anything and they don't know what to do next. So it's, it's the, it's a it's this transitional point. So um, I didn't know if, if I was going to give it like a business kind of book or or a step by step something to whatever. So I just thought I spoke to a friend of mine. I was like, look, I honestly I just want people to just read it. She was nice. like, why don't you call it that? She's like, I was like, what? She's like, just read it. So I went online and I couldn't find a book called Just Read It. Of all <laughs> the millions of books published, I was like, you know what? Just read it. Because, you know, whenever you like something, like when you like to eat something, whatever, you tell people, oh, just taste this. Just, just eat it. You know what I mean? So I said, you know, just read it. That's excellent. That's excellent. Very original. It's about two years now that you've been coming in and out of, of the UAE, going back to the US. Mm -hmm. How do you see what has happened in the UAE, seeing it from abroad? What, what do you feel yeah. the UAE has gone through in these two years? So one of the major events that I've seen uh, uh, with the UAE is obviously the expo. The build up to the expo and then the expo itself. Um, uh, there was a lot of hype in the in, in, um, in, in the US uh, as well, you know, when they saw like how the UAE dealt with two major things. First, the pandemic, mm. uh, which is a great job, uh, you know, in terms of uh, 
the quarantine and everybody was talking about how quickly a lot of the people in the UAE got vaccinated and the testing rates even before the vaccines that came out, how the UAE managed all of that. But, um, uh, but also the thing that, that also put the UAE on the map is that Emirates Airlines, for example, was one of the very few airlines around the world that was still moving at least its cargo and logistics. And, and Chicago in the U.S. was the hub for moving a lot of things from the UAE to Chicago uh, through Emirates Airlines. So that got a lot of like positive, um, let's say, uh, feedback about the country. But also then right after dealing with the pandemic, you saw how we launched the expo. And the fact that, you know, the expo is just like, a marvel right now when you go there and you see the pavilions and you see all this all all the content that's that's presented there it's just getting a lot of people coming from from the US to come to the UAE and also from around the world mm. so this is what i've seen that you know that that i think the major lesson was resilience mm. that uh, the ability to be resilient to be agile in such a tough environment really is a thing that i think um uh, for me, showed me how how uh, how beautiful and how strong this country is. I think people learned from the pandemic is that we had to reduce a lot of inefficiencies. These inefficiencies cost the government companies billions of dollars. Mm. Do you know traffic in the UAE costs the government four billion dollars a year? Wow, that's insane. Wow. So why continue with all these inefficiencies when when we have a solution? We already have solutions in front of us, but we ch choose not to use it for some reason. What connected us? Like what made you decide that you wanted to have me on Leaders Middle East, on your conference in Ras Al Khaimah, wow. on, on all of these different things? What, why me? I think, uh, well, at that time as, as well as now, you've been, you've been quite uh, out there when it comes to being in the public eye type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at that time was just about when you were launching your book, so yeah. you were in the media. You have always been seen as this young Emirati, you know, up and coming personality. And I think myself, like many others, have been watching your journey and, and, and we're actively looking and yeah. we're checking what you're up to and that you went to the US and you took this scholarship. So uh, going back to me asking uh, the question. Thank you, I was just looking for compliments. <laughs> I, I just wanted him to confess and, and unleash his love to me, but it's okay. Thank you, uh, now, now we can continue though. No, but <laughs> I it, get... it relates to my question. Like what, what would be some tips that you would give to your 10 year younger you, you know, before doing all of this, getting started, you're back at being 25. You say you're 35 now. What tips would you give to your 25 year old? Oh, God. Um, First of all, would you do it all over again? And uh, <laughs> what would you change in the process? You know, look, a lot of people will, will say, uh, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. Yes, I would continue this. But you know, no, I, there's there's quite a number of things I would have done differently. Number one, save a lot of the money that I spent. <laughs> <laughs> number two, because <laughs> now when I look at it, I'm like, oh my God, all these years passed. And if I had, for example, I would have invested a whole lot more money in Bitcoin. I'm so disappointed. Right, that so I you would have invested money in Bitcoin back 10 years ago. Yes, I, I would. I would have followed this one very good friend did of mine. Did you hear about Bitcoin back then? I did. Okay. I was there and I was like, yeah, be, like BS. Yeah. Who's going to invest in Bitcoin? 10 years this? ago was about $100. Now I know, a, I know. I, I, 50. I don't even, thousand. don't tell me. I know. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. I mean, I, I want to follow this one really good friend of mine. He, his name is Rafael in the US and Rafael Marimon. And he's like, so he's one of the guys that invested early and I'm trying to follow him. But uh, and his and now he's just jumping through this trend NFTs and whatever. And now I'm like, oh, God, I have to buy like some boring ape or something. Anyways, I think this is one of Sheikh Mohammed's important yeah. quotes. Yeah? Oh, yeah, we do not Absolutely. wait for things to happen. Rather, we make them happen. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the, the, this is this is a thing that I think uh, a lot of people just love Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid for for always coming up with quotes that challenge I think a narrative that's sometimes um, not extremely positive about the UAE and everything but then he always challenges and back by just giving sometimes one word or sometimes just one liner yeah. about what the UAE is and about. And they always feel so relevant. They yeah. Always, like, they stick on time. Yeah. Something that he said maybe yeah. five, six years ago becomes so relevant. Yes. 100%. A, a few years later. Yeah. And, uh, he's like almost like seeing the future. You 100%. Know? You know, he is one of the very few leaders in the world that walks the talk. Yeah, he says it and yeah. he does it. Um, so uh, one of the other things I would have said to myself 25 years ago is I would have been more patient. Okay. Uh, I think 
you know, you don't realize, I don't, I don't know, is it hormonal or is it just guys sometimes just do a lot of dumb things and don't think um, before we do. So I always say like, because I think it's an Aries personality. Uh -huh. We do, then think, we don't think and then do. Yeah. So now I've become more like that. And it, had I done that better, oh my God, it would have been such a, it, it would have been at least a little bit more manageable. I would have done almost everything else. Um, I wouldn't have gotten married before. I was married once upon a time. It was okay. the worst experience of my life. So you, you're still um, young? And yeah, you, I'm still you young, feel... not married yet. And hopefully I will be uh, soon. But at that time, yeah, that was like a traumatizing because it kept me away from... So, so, so far we have evil. save money, be patient and yeah. don't get married young. Exactly. Right. I would have given him my time, you know. And mm. now, I mean, I'll, I'll do it again. But I'm just saying I wouldn't have done it at like 24. I was married mm. at 24. Like, mm. what the hell? And it was myself. It wasn't a family pressure or anything. It was just one of those dumb things people do. That is definitely not game changing. That changed the game altogether. So, what yeah. would you say has been the single most uh, defining moment in your career that really turned everything into a, another direction of things? When I was 21, mm -hmm. uh, I was bedridden for several months. And that's because I had tuberculosis in my spine. Wow. So when I had that, uh, I remember, like, and I was like paraplegic. I could not move from the bed. You know, like for example, I don't believe in the word strangers. And these were people from all over the world that were like looking after me in the hospital. So you had people from India, you had uh, different, uh, you know, Iranians, you had Filipinos, you had people from all over the world. They're different religions, whether they're uh, Hindu, Christian, I don't know. Uh, there was a, the, the doctor was from Iran. He's, uh, he was a, a Muslim Shia. Like all these things doesn't matter. Mm, yeah. So you see all these entrepreneurs building up new places, roasters, uh, specialty um, uh, uh, breakfast. Uh, I saw that one brand we just passed by the lime tree. These, these people were here from the very beginning and they're like, they are the true game changers. Like these Absolutely. startups and entrepreneurs, these are the people that I see are the game changers. So uh, at 21, it's when it struck me. Wow. And regardless of where people are from, in the end of the day, we're all human. Absolutely. And they looking after me and I, all I could see, I remember, is people who were just concerned and, and wanting to take you back to life and, and, and uh, yeah, just give you hope again, you know? So uh, that was the most defining moment of my life and it changed me entirely. Like, I think it, it, I wasn't, it wasn't like I was a prick or something. I mean, mm. I was okay, but this even humbled me down more. Like it, mm. it almost gave me my purpose. I, re I recognized my purpose there, where to be this diplomat mm. and ambassador for the UAE, for my faith, for my people, for everything. So. Uh, that's why a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you're so cool and why are you like different? And I don't go into too many details like I did now about the surgery and everything. But that was the moment where I realized it changed me entirely. Um, and then the, the one more point in my life where it changed everything. I think it's, it's when some people uh, really believe in you and they, they see something that you don't see. So, mm -hmm. for example... When I worked at the British Embassy, I didn't even have a bachelor's degree at the time. Wow. But the British ambassador at that time, Edward Oakden, he saw something in me. In 10 minutes, Lorenzo, 10 minutes, he said, you're exactly what we need. Mm. And it changed my life. I met the Queen. I met uh, uh, Prince Andrew. I met men members of Parliament. I met people from the House of Lords, House of Commons, everywhere. Like I, mm. I was, a, I was a kid, I was 21, and I was dealing with the ministers. I sat on a table, it was myself, Gordon Brown, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, and the British ambassador. Mm. I couldn't believe it. Wow. What was discussed there came on the newspaper six months later. I was like, oh my God, I witnessed that. It's those, this is, this is just people who just, mm. I guess they like you and they see something in you and it's, it's crazy. And again, I think it's like, it's uh, when I think now being on this monorail and, and uh, the theme of the expo, as I said earlier, it's about mobility and everything and, right. and they're showcasing so many new innovations. This is perfect. I mean, um, now we go into this rapid fire type of questions. Shoot. You have to give us what comes to your mind. Just a couple of words, one word after I prompt something to you. Okay. If I would say Dubai, what comes to your mind? Success. Best car? 
Lamborghini. Best movie ever seen. Uh, catch me if you can. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Uh, best book. Not yours. Just read it. <laughs> <laughs> Good to Great by Jim Collins. Future. Hopeful. If you were an animal, what animal would you be? Tiger. Wow. Why? That's what she said. Um, uh, I was told that I have a tigerish <laughs> Tiger. personality. Best holiday? Mykonos. If you could have a billboard on Shakespeare Road with yep. your face on it, what would be the slogan under it? Okay, this is supposed to be fun or serious? <laughs> <laughs> you choose. We can do two versions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, if I had a billboard with um, the best is yet to come. Good. Well, look, Omar, I'm, I'm getting to the end of, of today's uh, session. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Just to maybe to, to sum it up, what would be your message to a lot of the up and coming, you know, young entrepreneurs, young philanthropists, young diplomatics that are looking to take on the world, yeah. Emiratis, non-Emiratis, mm -hmm. people from the world, what, what would you say to them? Um, number one, surround yourself with a circle of support and like-minded people. Um, number two, um, have a holistic view on things and not just like one-sided. Um, number three, I would say um, be kind. It's, it's, it will take you a very long way. And uh, number four, which is the most important, is read my book. Excellent. Omar Abbas thank you so much. Thank you very much, Lorenzo. Thank you.